Hey guys, and welcome to this intermediate calisthenics workout. Now, you're not going to need any equipment for the main part of this workout. All you're going to need is a little bit of space on your floor and yourself. You don't even need shoes. That is the beauty of calisthenics. However, for the warm-up, I'm going to use a thin resistance band. So if you have one of these lying around, it can be a really useful tool. But if you don't, don't stress at all. You can just use the same movements, but without a band or any weights or anything like that. So we're just going to start out with some shoulder dislocates. It's going to be a really quick and easy warm-up. So you're going to hold your band, or if you have a dressing gown, cord, something like that, you can hold that as well, or a belt. And you're just going to pass it over your head, keeping your arms nice and straight, and then back through. So you don't need to have your arms too wide, but you want them wide enough that you're getting a nice sensation through your shoulders and a good range of motion. So nice and strong, keep your core engaged right from the beginning of the workout. We'll do that for one more time. Nice work. And then what we're gonna do is just loop that band through your feet, and you're just gonna stand on it, and we're just gonna do some shoulder presses. So you're gonna bring your hands up, and then we're going to press that overhead, elbows come down to the side, and then push straight back up again. Again, staying nice and strong. If you don't have a band, you can just do this with your hands, that's not a problem at all. And start to think about your breathing, now we're getting into our warm-up, so breathe in on the way down, and then out on the way up. Nice and strong, through your feet. Just a couple more reps here. One more. Nice work. All right, let's move into warming up that lower body. So it's going to double that band over and we're going to step onto it. So you've got some little handles here. I'm just going to do some kind of good morning style movement. So holding onto the band, we're going to pivot at the hip or hinge at the hip, keeping our legs fairly straight with a slight bend in our knees, sending that butt back, keeping that chin tucked in. You don't want your head craned up like this. Switching on that core and you should feel this down your back of your legs, down your hamstrings, maybe even into your calves, depending on how tight you are. Let's just do two more reps. Nice work. And then we're just gonna move into some rows. So you're gonna stay in that position and use your band. You're going to draw your hands up towards your hips, elbows towards the ceiling, keeping that nice strong hinge with a straight back. So make sure you're keeping that chin tucked in. Keeping that core tight. Think about lat activation. Squeeze back and come back down, nice and controlled. When you come back down, try not to let the band dictate where you're going. Instead, you control it. Let's just do two more reps here. Nice work. Awesome. You can pop that band to the side. We don't need that anymore for now. I'm just going to move into some one of the best bits of warm up, which is. A little bit of wrist mobility and a bit of wrist stretching. So for just 30 seconds, we're just going to move around on our wrists and our hands in any way that feels comfortable. So you want your hands roughly below your shoulders and you can have them facing any direction. In fact, I encourage you to switch them and just do what feels good for you. Circuit, going around in circles on them, you can flip them over so you have the tops of your hands and then sit back a little bit onto your heels. This is a really nice stretch. And then you can even point it out to the sides and just rock from side to side. Whatever really feels good for you. It's always nice, especially we're gonna be doing quite a lot of pushing in this workout. So definitely important to warm up those hand muscles. All right, so we're gonna move into round one shortly. You've got a 30 second rest. So if you need to go and grab anything that you want, if you wanna change your shoes, if you wanna grab a bottle of water, then go and do that now. And I will see you back here in 30 seconds for round one. All right, let's get 
get stuck into round one. So each round, and we've got three rounds in total, is going to consist of six different exercises. We're going to do them back to back with a little bit of rest in between. So we're going to do each exercise for 60 seconds and we're going to have a rest for 30 seconds. So it's a little bit longer than we usually do. If you need to take a break at any point, then that is absolutely fine. And then we've got that 30 second rest so I can explain the next exercise and we can get stuck into it. So. Exercise number one, let's get stuck in. We're gonna do some negative push-ups. So you're gonna start in your high plank position and we want to control the down, the concentric phase of the exercise, nice and strong. And then we get to the bottom, knees come onto the ground and we're gonna push back up, come back to our plank and then do it again. So nice and controlled, think about the movement, where your arms are, knees come down and then we push up in that knee push-up. And we're just here for another 30 seconds. It goes super, super quickly. Try to stay nice and strong with it. And come back up, keeping that tension in your core. So you want to think about intra-abdominal pressure. So try to think of yourself as a can of fizzy pop that's been shaken up and you want to put some press, pressure on the outside of your body. So you kind of want to exert pressure outwards, almost expanding your rib cage, but trying to keep it tight at the same time. Bit of a contradiction, I know, but it works. Then coming down, nice and controlled, feet on the ground, and then pushing back up. And you're done with your first exercise, so we've got 30 seconds rest, so you guys have a nice little rest. We're actually gonna come up to standing for the next exercise and work on some lower body. This is our only standing exercise, I think, that I've put into this workout. So we're actually gonna do some Cossack squats. Now, Cossack squats also require a bit of mobility because we're coming quite fast to the ground. So if you're not comfortable with them, you can just do a side lunge, so stay here. But otherwise, get ready in position, nice wide stance, and we're gonna head into our Cossack squats. So we're gonna alternate sides. So we're gonna come down, making sure that the pressure's through the heel, and then coming up to standing, trying to keep our chest as upright as possible. Switch sides, and then push back up. You want your knee to be tracking over the second toe on your foot, roughly. Don't get too hung up on it, but just make sure that your, your feet are pointed out to the sort of corners of the room, and make sure your knee is tracking over it, just to keep, we keep ourselves nice and protected and nice and strong. All right, we've got 30 seconds left for this exercise. Like I said, if this is too challenging, then just stay with the side lunge. You wanna think about sitting backwards onto that heel, keeping your chest up nice and high, and then coming side to side. And if you want to make this more challenging and you're just doing a side lunge, then you can just grab yourself some weight and add a little bit of weight to it. Otherwise, you're coming down to the ground with me. I often find I have to adjust my feet a little bit in between, just because they do slip a little bit. I'm just gonna do one more, just to make sure that I'm getting equal reps on each side. But you've got a 30 second rest. So take a little bit of rest. We're moving back into our upper body, we're going to do some inchworms with some shoulder taps. Now the key thing with inchworms is really trying to minimise that side to side movement, so controlling it, so you want a nice steady base, hands come down to the floor, you can bend your legs, you're going to walk out, tap your shoulders on this one, trying to again minimise the side to side movement, come back up to standing, alright, let's go, so you're going to walk out, tap those shoulders, keep that core nice and strong, and then walk back in. Come back up to standing. Nice simple movement, but when we really focus on the form, you start to notice that it can be very, very challenging, which is great. It's what we want to see. You're nearly halfway there. Don't forget to breathe as well, it can be really tempting just to hold your breath, but we want to make sure that we're breathing, getting that oxygen in, and we're controlling our breath rather than just letting it do what it wants. Five more seconds, right time to squeeze one more rep in. Come back up to standing, nice work guys. 30 seconds rest for you, and we are moving into a little bit of core, so we're going to do some Quadruped holds. I always used to call these the wrong name. I used to pronounce it wrong. It is quadruped. It always looks like quadruped to me. What we're going to do is have our hands beneath our shoulders, knees beneath our hips, and we're going to have our toes tucked under. And what we're simply going to do is raise our, our knees about an inch off the floor, and we're going to hold it there. So get in a position, guys. We've got a minute here. 
And what you want to do is not allow those knees to drop or to come up too high. You want to keep them just floating around an inch off the floor. Really push up and protract your scapula, so pull your shoulder blades apart. Be nice and active in this movement, just nice and strong. We're halfway there already, it goes really, really quickly. Just check your knees, make sure they're not coming up too high. This is a challenging movement, even though it looks super, super easy. Control your breathing, nice deep breath in, and out. Nice work, 10 more seconds to go. Four, three, two, one. Knees go down, you can have a little bit of rest. Shake it out in your arms. We have two more exercises to go. We're gonna move on to the back side of our body now. We're just gonna do a reverse plank. So these are more static holds, these ones, but we're gonna add some more dynamic movements to them in the next couple of, couple of rounds. So with our reverse plank, we're gonna flip over onto our backs. We're gonna have our heels on the floor, hands come beneath your shoulders, and you're gonna push your hips up to the ceiling. So jump into that position, and we're just gonna stay here for the entire minute. It feels like a long time, it is a decent amount of time, but you guys have got this easy. If you find that this is a little bit challenging, because obviously this requires a little bit of mobility in the shoulder as well, what you can do is just bring your feet in a little bit. Come into a tabletop or even an extended tabletop, and slowly you can start creeping your legs out until you can get into that full reverse plank position. Because it's not just strength that we're requiring here, it's definitely a little bit of mobility in there as well. Nice work, we've got 25 seconds to go. I actually quite like this, it feels like you get a nice stretch down the front of your shoulder and the front of your arm and your bicep as well, it's really lovely. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, nice work. Butt goes down, you guys, rest for 30 seconds. And I will show you our final exercise of round one. You're doing amazing already. We're already a third of the way through the workout, so nice and easy, it goes nice and quick. We're gonna do some back extensions. We're gonna work into the back muscles, just like we did with the reverse plank, but in a slightly different way. So we're gonna do that with doing some WYs. So we're gonna come in this position, feet are touching the floor. So jump into it, we're gonna extend our arms up. Pull our elbows back, squeeze, and then come back to that wide position, and then back down. And try not to let your hands touch the floor in between each rep. So you want to keep them floating off, and we come up, squeeze back, in, and down. Really great exercise for your back. You should also feel this all the way down to your glutes, and you do want to make sure that you have your glutes switched on, so try not to be super passive. You want to think about squeezing your bum, even squeezing your hamstrings, using everything to draw your chest up, pull those elbows back, and extend back out again, and in. If this is too challenging, hands can just come here. If you have a sensitive lower back, make sure you do keep those feet on the ground, and you're just going to bring your chest up, and then float it back down. So there is an option, but if you're here in the intermediate, Level, you're going to have your hands extended out in front of you, up, squeeze back, this is actually your last rep, and down. Nice work. All right, that's it. All six exercises done. This is easy as that. You guys, go and have a one minute rest, and I will see you back here for round two. Alright, let's get stuck into round two. We're going to be doing the same exercises, but some of them we're just going to amp them up a little bit and make them that little bit harder. First of all though, we're starting with our negative push-ups and these are going to be exactly the same. So coming up into that high plank position, I'm just going to aim for a nice, steady 
downward facing exercise, feet go on the floor, so like knees go on the floor, and you're going to come back up to the starting position, and then we're going to go again, making sure everything is switched on. I know we traditionally think of push-ups as being uh, upper body exercise, but really it's a compound movement, it's a full body movement. We want to make sure we have our legs switched on, our glutes switched on, our core switched on, our backs, everything needs to be working and we're trying to keep everything strong while we come down and controlling that movement. Make sure that you have your chin tucked in so you have your eyes just about a foot in front of you and you want to think about bringing your chest down towards your hands. Of course, if this is too challenging, jump onto an incline, just do an incline push-up instead. That is not a problem at all. You need to make these workouts work for you. You are done, you've got a 30 second rest and we're going to move into those Cossack squats. Again, if you need to modify them, that is not a problem at all. Jump into your side lunge and you can always hold a weight at your chest or even above your shoulders just to make it that little bit harder. But if you're with me, then we're going to jump into position. So a nice wide stance. You want to think about having those feet pointing out, those toes pointing out a little bit to the corner of the room. Chest up nice and high, core stays nice and strong. Come up onto the heel that you are not going to be moving down onto. And then come down nice and low, as low as you can, and then push back up. Try to minimize the momentum in all of these exercises. You want our movements to be really intentional. So for that reason, slow and steady. Let's think about tempo. So around two seconds down, hold it for one second at the bottom, and then push back up nice and strong. So we really are controlling that movement. Like I say, being really intentional with what we're doing. Calisthenics is interesting because there's so many different types of calisthenics that you can do, but it really does require concentration, strength, coordination, control, and finding that tempo can be a really important part of that. So something to consider when we're exercising. We've got 10 seconds left here. You can squeeze in a couple more reps. Again, I'm going to just do one more on each side just to make sure I'm even. I already have one leg bigger than the other, I don't need to make it any worse. And we are done, we've got 30 second rest, and we're moving into our inchworms. Last time we did inchworms with a shoulder tap, this time we're gonna walk out and add in, you guessed it, a push-up. Why not add in push-ups where we can? So we're just going to do our inchworm, minimizing that side-to-side -side movement again. When we get to this position, add a push-up in, and then come back out. If you find it hard to push up, just throw a negative in and come back up on your knees. So, we're going to come down, walk out, no side to side movement. Like I mentioned, if you can't do a push up, that's not a problem at all. Just do a negative, try and control it, come back up on your knees, up into a plank, and then walk back. So there's always an option to modify to whatever works for you. So, let's go. We've got 30 seconds left. Nice strong push up, walking back, getting onto those heels and standing up nice and straight. Now I've made this a circuit workout because for the sake of a YouTube video, it's a lot easier to do it like that because that means that you're not having to do the same amount of reps as me, we're not all working at the same speed. So you can focus on your form over everything else. But if you wanted to break this up into a sets of rep type workout, then you're more than welcome to. Guys, you have a rest now, so 30 seconds of rest. But like I was saying, you could just separate these exercises and do three sets of the first exercise, so our push-ups, and then three sets of the next exercise, which is our Cossack squats. It's up to you. So you can just write it down and do the workout like that. But if you want to follow along with me, and listen to me rattle on, then <laughs> you're more than welcome to. Right, moving into our next exercise, we've got five seconds. We're going to do those quad holds again, those quadruped holds. This time, though, we're going to add a shoulder tap in. So we're in our position, knees come off the floor. You need your feet to be about hip distance apart. Again, we want to stay as level as possible. And when doing so, we're going to lift our left hand, tap our right shoulder, and then switch to our right hand tapping our left shoulder. So you want to keep your tailbone slightly tucked in a little bit in this movement. So you're nice and strong through your core, keeping your abs switched on, keeping those ribs wrapped in, and then just tapping those shoulders. 
This is challenging, it looks again super super easy, but it is a challenging movement, so if that is too difficult, take the shoulder taps out and you can just float your knees off the ground, or even just have a little rest, and then come back into it. Quality over quantity always, and 60 seconds is quite a decent amount of time to be doing this for, so don't you worry. Three, two, one, nice. We're gonna have a little rest. We're gonna move into those reverse planks again. So we're gonna set ourselves up. This time, if you feel comfortable with your reverse planks, we're gonna add a knee pull in. So we're going to get into position and starting in our reverse plank, we're gonna bring our knee into our chest and then extend that leg back out, switch sides. So that is gonna be the movement if you want it. Otherwise, just stick with the reverse plank or even the tabletop, whatever's right for you. So, hands come down, we're gonna come up, lift those hips up to high heaven. We wanna think about keeping them there. That's what we really wanna focus on, squeezing those glutes. And then from there, shift your weight into your left leg and bring that right knee in and switch sides. Nice work. Just keep your head wherever's comfortable for you. You don't want it leaning back completely, but you don't need to have your chin totally tucked in. Just keep nice and strong and keep lifting those hips up. Nice work. We've got 15 seconds left here, so keep it going. You might want to speed it up a little bit now. Extensions. So we're going to flip over onto our stomachs. There's definitely something about a workout where you're mostly on the floor that I find really, really satisfying. I don't know about you, but I just like not having to stand up too much. I don't know if that's lazy, but we're still working out, so it's, it's okay, I think. Right, back extensions. So, lying flat on the floor, arms extend out in front of you. We've got three seconds. We're going to come into those wide W shapes. So, you can keep those toes touching the floor. Let's go. Nice work, keep it going. Get that nice squeeze back, 20 seconds to go. So the modification is here, should you need it. Five seconds. Two and one. Nice work. All right, guys, that is round two done. We are over 60% of the way through the workout. We've got one more round to go. I will see you back here shortly for round three. round three, the last round to go. We're going to start with our push-ups. Instead of doing negatives this time, if you feel like you're ready for it, we're going to just do regular push-ups. So let's get stuck into it. We're here for one minute. So nice and strong, coming down and pushing back up. Now, if you want, you can just try and do a couple of push-ups and then once you feel like you've fatigued and you're at your point where just the form is starting to be compromised, we don't want that. So you can then jump into your negatives. So it's up to you. Again, you need to make this work for you. Or you can just stick to incline push-ups. Whatever level you're at, just do what feels right for you. We're over halfway there, keep it going. Keep that core nice and strong. Keep that tailbone tucked under a little bit. 
Chest coming between your thumbs. Nearly 10 seconds to go. You can squeeze a few more out. One more. Awesome work, guys. That is not easy. Take a rest. You've got 30 seconds, and we're going to move into our Cossack squats. Again, I'm just going to leave these as they are. If you want to add some weight to your Cossack squats, then feel free to do so. But I'm pretty happy with just working on the mobility and, again, talking about that tempo and that control. So for me, that's kind of where my focus is at. But again, just make it work for you. Whatever feels right, whatever level you're at, that is perfect. So setting yourself up in that nice wide stance, chest up nice and high. Coming up onto that heel, toes pointing out slightly. Come down and push up. I often find with Kazakh squats and side lunges, it takes a couple of reps just to find the right width and the right placement for your feet. So if that is happening to you, then that's absolutely fine. If you do want to make this slightly more challenging, you can start to add in a bit of mobility. So sometimes I like to bring my hands behind my head. This is quite challenging if you struggle with upper body mobility, so don't worry if it feels really, really gnarly, but it might be an option if you just want to elevate your Cossacks a little bit more. So nice and strong with your core, coming down, control, hold it for one second, and then push back up. We're here for another 10 seconds. Nice and strong. And if you're sort of fatiguing at this point, feel free to jump into that side lunge variation. Hands can be wherever you like. We've got one more second. I'm going to do two more. Squeeze them in again to get those even amount of reps in. And we are done with that exercise. Right, we're moving on to the next one, which was inchworms with a push up. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, we can move into some comedians. They look a little bit like this. So we're going to start up in our plank position. We're going to push back, come forward, push up and then press back. So we're going to try and put it into one flowing movement. So again, we're back with our push-ups again for one minute. So let's get stuck in. So standing in that plank position, we're going to push back into a little bit of a tuck pipe, come forward, push up, and then return to that position. And try to smooth that movement out. So it's in that one long movement. If you find push-ups challenging, and they are challenging, so don't stress if it is quite hard. You can just push back into a tuck and come forward into a plank and then come back. So you're just getting that mobility aspect and a nice strong plank. And again, you can make it work for you by pushing back, coming forward, doing a negative, coming back up on your toes and pushing back. There are just so many options available. So get creative if you need to. Five seconds. Let's make this the last one. Nice work, guys. That's awesome. Have a 30 second rest. We're moving into our quadruped holds. Last time we did shoulder taps. This time we're going to focus a little bit more on our lower body and we're going to do some leg lifts. So we're going to extend our legs out. I'll show you what it looks like. Again, the key thing is keeping those knees just floating off the floor. So we're going to come into our quadruped hold, extend one leg out to the back of the room and bring it back in and switch sides. So jump up into your position and we're going to come into our leg lift. So hold for one second, bring it back in and then change legs. Now of course there's always that temptation that as you extend your leg out, the knee that's floating is going to rise up, it's going to come back down and that's what we really want to fight and try to control as much as possible. So Come into our quadruped, extend that leg up. Try not to let this leg float up. Keep your back, your spine in alignment. Chin tucked down and come back in. All nice and controlled. 20 seconds left. Stick with it guys, we're nearly there. We're so close to the end of the workout, you're doing an amazing job. Definitely feel those triceps starting to burn now. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice look. Tell you what, shake out those arms. We're gonna need it. We've got our reverse planks coming up. We're gonna stick with those knee pulls, so we're not gonna change the exercise too much. 
Just stick with having those knee pulls and controlling that movement. And if you want to make it harder, just think about maybe speeding up a little bit and keeping those hips up nice and high. Still got about 10 seconds of rest here, so not too bad. All right, let's jump into it. So reverse plank, hands under the shoulders, coming up, and we're going to straight into our knee pulls, keeping nice and strong. Nice job, halfway there, keep it going. Keep pushing those hips up. Last 10 seconds, let's see if we can speed this up a little bit. You guys have got this, come on. Four, three, two, and one. Nice work, bum goes down. And then we are gonna move into the last exercise, guys, we've made it. We made it to the last exercise, well done. We've got our YW back extensions. This time, if you wanna make it just a little bit harder, you can raise your feet off the ground. So when you're in this movement, instead of having your toes touching the ground, sort of supporting you, you can just float those off and just add that little extra layer of difficulty. All right, three seconds to go. Let's get stuck into it. Even though it looks so simple, it's such a challenging exercise. I don't talk too much to this one because I sound really funny. Because I'm trying to really tense. Over halfway, come on, keep going. Five seconds, let's squeeze one more out. Amazing work, guys, amazing. All right, 30 seconds, go towel off, have a little bit of water, and then we'll meet you back here for the best, and probably one of the most important parts of the workout, the stretch. All right, guys, all the hard work is done. Now for the nice bit. We're just going to do a little bit of a cool down stretch. We're just going to come down into an upward dog position. So you're going to have, you can have your knees, your feet, everything on the ground. And it's going to pull your chest through and forward. And just look out in front of you. Push up through your hands and just let your belly sink down, your hips sink down a little bit. Just whatever's comfortable for you. Nice work. We're going to sit back into child's pose. So knees come out to the side and drop our chest down in between our arms and sit back onto our heels. If this is a little bit challenging for you, you can always stack your hands and just place your forehead on top of your arms. Otherwise, just drop that chest down. You can actually walk your hands over to the left a little bit. Should feel a nice stretch down your right side. Think about pulling that right hip back a little bit. Nice work. And then walk those hands over to the left and bring that left hip back a little bit as well. Awesome work. Come up nice and slowly. 
So we come up onto our knees and we're going to bring our right foot forward into a low lunge. So you can keep those toes at the back just untapped. I'm just going to lean into that movement. If you want, you can bring your hands down to the ground. Just feel that stretch in the inside of your right leg a little bit more. That feels so nice, this stretch. This is honestly the best part where you can just take a nice deep breath and think about all the hard work that you've done and enjoy the movement. It's going to switch sides. Nice work. Again, you can bring your hands down to the ground if it feels right for you. Otherwise, just keep them stacked up on your knee and you can just sink deeply into that stretch. Nice work. I'm just going to face the front. You can stay on your knees or sitting on your feet if you want, that's absolutely fine. It's going to bring your hand up and over, bring it down your back and just pull gently on that elbow, whatever feels comfortable. This one feels really good after all those push-ups. Really working that upper body, the shoulders, the triceps. Had a good workout up there today, that's for sure. Nice work. Nice wide stance and then switch arms so your left arm comes back and you can pull slightly on that left elbow. Awesome work. I'm just going to come up to standing nice and slowly. I'm just going to do a little bit of a forward fold so you can have a bit of a bend in your legs. That's absolutely fine. We're just going to roll down towards the ground. And then roll back up, keeping your spine curved. And then you're going to have your head come up last. And again, roll down. And then roll back up. And that is it, guys. Well done. Thank you so much for joining me in this workout. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video. And I hope you have an amazing day.